Hello everyone, welcome back to the Silver Screen Dudes, Nico Liro and Lauren in the house. And just before the season finale of House of the Dragon, which makes me very sad that it's over, we thought we'd look at the best part, arguably, of House of the Dragon, the dragons. Or the the the, the air puppies, the sky puppies. As sky Lauren, puppies. Sky puppies, as Lauren has come to call them. Um, I'm very much of the attitude of, I know nothing about them, they just look good. I am, dragons are for me like cars. I don't need to know the horsepower. It just needs to look good. And these dragons look good. Lauren knows a lot about dragons though. Teach me. We know that the next battle is the Battle of the Honey Wine. And we've got a few that might be going on at the same time, but we'll touch on this shortly. The sowing of the seeds has only really just been completed. So with only one episode left, following that sowing in the books, there's a couple of battles that go on at the same time. In the, Targary in the Targaryen Civil War. So we've got the Battle of the Gullet, the Battle of Honeywine, and the Battle of Red Fork and Fishfeed. So we don't actually know where they're going to go with this. You know, where is the season going to take it? Are they going to focus on one battle? Are all of these battles going to be going on at the same time? We literally have no idea. But I do think the Battle of the Honeywine will probably be the focus, but we will see. So we want to do some special mentions as well because we now have a few inactive dragons or a few that have left us. But just before we get into that, I noticed that there's still over 90% of you that have not subscribed to the channel. So if you like this guy and if you like the content that I'm bringing you, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. It helps me out so much with the algorithm and it allows me to keep bringing you that content. Let's get back to it. So Maylees, RIP. Uh, she was one of my favourites from the beginning, I know. Uh, she was absolutely one of my favourites. Uh, she was known as the Red Queen and she was bonded to Rhaenerys Valerian, who obviously we saw perish um, in the in the first battle that we saw, uh, that also took Sunfire down, because Vagar is absolutely monstrous. Um, the Queen that never was, she obviously, she it was I thought it was obvious that she was she knew she was riding Melees to to their deaths. Um, yeah. And I was so angry when I was watching it. I was like, why are you doing this? And I think the only feasible reason is that she could just see the battle getting out of hand and things being taken out of their hands. And like we saw with Lena Targaryen, uh, when she was dying in childbirth, she took her own death into her own hands and did everything on her terms. And I think that's the only feasible explanation for that. And probably one of the most heartbreaking scenes in the whole thing that's comparable to Drogon's cry when, when Danny was killed, um, when Maylees looked back at Rhaenerys and it was just like oh no they, they know what's going to happen here and oh it was just just horrific but she was fantastic she's one of the oldest dragons around um she was originally bonded to Alyssa Targaryen who was Viserys and Daemon's mother so after she passed she and then um, Rhaenerys came onto the scene that they were bonded she was also considered to be the fastest dragon in Westeros which is insane considering her size because obviously you think like the smaller ones would be more agile and faster and things like that mm. you know she had the size and the speed um and yeah she was obviously taken out quite early and paraded around king's landing as some sort of trophy which obviously made the people unrest because they thought that dragons were invincible so she's played a really big part in this despite not having been in it for in this season for that long so r.i.p millies we will always remember you um, another special mention is to arax who was the dragon of luceris who or luke who oh, were both killed uh, by Vega and Aemond yeah. um, at the end of season one, which was just horrific. Um, Such a great was... way to end the season, though. Oh, oh it, it was. It was a typical Game of Thrones ending, but oh, my God, it was just awful. And the fact that Aemond just didn't have control of Vega, that was something that I was really interested in. I did a bit of research on this. So, you know, I, I, I haven't read the books, so I know some of the history and the history that we see in the TV, you know, that we're taught in the TV show but there's some bits that I don't know. So I tried to fill in some of the gaps. So Vega was involved with um, the Battle of Dawn, I, I believe it's called. And um, she could possibly have mistaken Luke having the dark hair for a Dornish person having stolen the dragon. So that could explain why Eamon didn't have control of her and couldn't get control of her to stop her from doing what she was doing. Um, other than that, they don't really offer any other explanation to that. So RIP Arax, um, very, very sad for those young guns. After those little special mentions, we'll get on to the main dragons. So firstly, we're just going to talk about two dragons that we don't, haven't seen much of or don't know what their fate is at the moment. So we've got Sunfire, which is Aegon's, Aegon's dragon, who obviously he rode into battle when he really shouldn't have done. And the last we've seen Sunfire was 
it looks like she uh, he was dying. Um, obviously, they rescued Egon, took him back, and we know his situation. But we have no definitive answer as to whether Sunfire is still alive at the moment. Renair has referred to him as being slain. Kristen Cole's referred to him as being in the dying or for the dying. But there is no actual definitive answer on where Sunfire is at the moment. A beautiful dragon, known as the most beautiful dragon to ever exist, is still one of the younger dragons. So mm. hopefully, Sunfire is still around. Beautiful dragon to watch. I don't um, buy it. Sunfire's dead. Nah, Do you Sunfire's think? Dead. See, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. I've also seen another theory that Sunfire becomes the cannibal. So there is another theory there. I don't Ooh. know how that would work. It is a theory, and obviously not much time has passed for him to go from one to the other. But I think if he was dead, wouldn't it have been more definitive like Melee's? Like, why have they left that hanging? I mean, he looked dead to me at the Battle of Rook's Rest. So, so did Aegon. He was still breathing. That dragon was toast. She was. She, he was breathing. He was still breathing the last time we saw him. I don't buy it. Anyway. Oh, well. It, magical creature. Anything can happen. But we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. And then we've got Tessarian, who we don't know much about at the moment, but we've seen her very briefly in the preview for the next episode. Now, Tessarian is the, um, the dragon of Daeron, um, Targaryen, who is the son that um, we've seen Alicent talking about recently that went to He's be raised um, yeah, kind boy, but probably takes, obviously um, well, he had kind parents, he was just raised in a kinder environment I suppose, so that potential is always there with their children so she's known as the Blue Queen she's actually a really cool looking dragon, um, but we've only briefly seen her in this preview so we don't know a lot about her at the moment but from what I've what I've read and the research that I've done it does seem that she will play quite a big part in at least this next battle and she will be a big um weapon for the greens obviously because at the moment as far as it stands they only have two dragons but she does seem like she's trained in battle so she'll be a really really interesting one to get to know so those are the two that we don't know much about and We'll go straight on to the green dragons because at the moment, as it stands, as we said, they only have two. So let's start with Dreamfire, one of my favourite names. It reminds me of something from like the Dreamstone or something like that. And she's she's bonded to Helena, obviously, some people call her the crazy queen or whatever, but I think she's really cool. I think it's mainly because she has some sort of magic about her that she she's also known as a, a dragon dreamer. So, they, that, which is basically just having visions and, and dreams regarding, like magical dreams regarding the dragons and things like that. So I think that's what causes her to come across like she's a little bit out of it, but she's probably actually going to do something pretty cool. Um, I'd like to see her do something because she's kind of been lurking around in the background there, but she re she's refused to, to fly Dreamfire for, for whatever her own reasons are. But we've seen in the preview that Eamon goes to her and says, I'm going to need you to, dry, uh, to ride Dreamfire into battle. So we have seen Dreamfire before. We haven't seen much of her. We saw her in season one when Aemond, the cocky little shit, went down to the mm. dragon pit to see if he could bond with her. Obviously, that went very wrong, and she just literally she was she's she's cool in the sense that she's one of the first that saw what a little shit he was, and she was like, "Nah, mate, you ain't coming near me," um, and she just rejected him immediately, which was just utterly fabulous. One of the other really cool things about her is she's the one that has laid the most eggs. Um, and it's also rumoured that she is the mother of Danny's eggs in obviously the later Game of Thrones. Um, there's also a rumour that the, the eggs came from um, from Cyrax, I think, as well. But I think Dreamfire is the more kind of surefire um, possibility as, as to where they came from. Uh, she was bonded to Rhaena Targaryen around a century before the Dance of the Dragons took place. And in the series, obviously, she's bonded to Helena. Um, so she's she's really interesting. So she's like a real mother of dragons or the mother of dragons in this season and in this sort of section of time in Westeros. So it'd be really exciting to see what comes of her and what comes of Helena actually getting, you know, getting back to, to riding her and, and seeing what they can do in battle. Mm. So that'll be a new one for us. So the other dragon that they have um, arguably makes up for the lack of numbers is Vagar. Yeah, now, a little Ulfa, bit, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Vagar is 
the biggest and most infamous dragon in Westeros. She's also the oldest. And I saw her being described as a lethargic, moss-ridden moss -ridden old lady, which I thought was just adorable because that's yeah, exactly yeah. what she is. And the reason why she's taking refuge in the uh, forest local to King's Landing is because she can't fit in the dragon pit anymore. Like she can't, she can't fit in the red keep. So she's gone and kind of found a solitary escape there, which is probably nice for her if she is, you know, an old moss ridden old lady. She doesn't want to be around the youngins. You know, she's got her own piece out there. She's big enough, to, big enough and ugly enough to take care of herself. Um, she was, as I mentioned earlier, she was involved in the Dornish War, and she was bonded to Visenya Targaryen, who had a very similar personality to Aemond. I read, uh, which may explain why she bonded with Aemon. She might have sensed you know, very similar intentions from him as she experienced with Visenya. However, between that, when she was bonded to Lena Targaryen, she was very kind. And you know, she she you know did good things while she was around her. So she's she's an interesting personality. I suppose it depends what mood she's in. Uh, no one gave her her HRT, so let's let's see how she's getting on with that. So every dragon fears her and she's 200 years old. So she's had 200 years of refusing to die. So is anyone really surprised that any other dragon doesn't want to be anywhere near her despite her size? Like clearly this, this dragon is going to be destructible at some point, I'm sure. But she's very intimidating and she just doesn't care. She doesn't give a f So she's just going to get involved with everything and dominate everything until something gets the better of her. So it'll be interesting to see what does because um, we obviously know the ultimate fate of this story. So let's see. Let's see how long she lasts and what happens with her. So let's get on to the Blacks, who have currently, uh, that we know seven. of, seven, seven. Seven. seven, seven active dragons for battle. So we'll start with Vermax, who is male, and that's Jace's dragon. So he, his egg was put into Jace, Jace's crib um, when he was a young infant. So they've been bonded since Vermax was born. Uh, we don't know much about their bond or their similar personalities or if that's kind of started mimicking itself yet, but we do know that Burmax doesn't like snow and is not fond of the cold, generally. So there's an interesting okay. little side fact for you. <laughs> Fun fact! Um, Burmax is the older brother of Arax um, and holds a little more strength, agility and potential in battle, though he's still very young. Uh, but his speed may be an advantage for him. So depending on how they use the dragons in battle and what they actually, what their strategy is, he could be very, very useful. And hopefully Jace won't let his ego get the better of him and ultimately the two of them. But Well, <laughs> you think we know where this is heading, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just like, sky puppies, don't kill the sky puppies. Then we've got Sea Smoke. So arguably one of the coolest, and he is a dude. Like, he is the first dragon that we've seen who has independently gone and found a new rider. So he was formerly bonded to Lainor Targaryen, Rhaenyra's first husband. Um, obviously, we know he left in season one. And we also know that dragons don't tend to bond with another rider unless their current rider has, has died. So that does indicate that he has somehow passed away. Why did he choose Adam of Hull? Don't know. I, I haven't actually got my head around why that might be. Have you got any theories on why he might have gone for him? Why he chose Adam of Hull, I actually don't know. Well, Valerian, I guess that's that's the only that's the only theory I've got. It's it, mm. yeah, weirded me out a bit too that one. I don't know. Well, Valerian blood is well. There's, there's some kind of theory rumors around the whole kind of world of this. Is that Valerian blood is stronger than Targaryen blood? in the eyes of a dragon, but the Targaryens have gone around that and made it out to be Targaryen blood, even though they kind of lean on, on Valerian, old Valerian blood as well. So the theory is that, that a Valerian would be able to bond with a dragon much more easily than a Targaryen even. So that's, the, I mean, that like you say, it's probably the only that's theory. Plus, you know, Sea Smoke might have been in, in sense because he was clearly getting restless. He was rejecting everybody that was being put in front of him, and he's gone independently to find someone. Then you think of Adam and the story that they're building with him was like he's trying to find his purpose in life. And Sea Smoke could have felt like he'd lost his purpose because he'd been stuck where he was, not doing anything, not active anywhere. So there could be that bond over a similar um, longing for 
for some for something for a purpose, I suppose. For sure. So we could we could we could break down to that. I mean, obviously he rejected everybody else. Sadly, Bernice and Stefan um, alive. Why there were no like vats of water around, knowing that dragons breathe fire, I've no idea. He easily could have been saved. Um, and I just feel like he just had enough. And it was that typical: if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. And he was just like, "Stop this! I'm off." and then just happened to find someone that he really resonated with. So he's really interesting and we know he's good for battle because we saw him in season one when Lainor was still riding him and he basically came and saved the day at the Battle of the Stepstones at saving Damon's life. So we know he's agile in battle and we know he's well versed in battle as well. So it'd be really interesting to see where he comes, comes from. We've also got Moon Dancer again, one of the best names. I don't know whether it's my such uh, a great Nos name. Yeah, yeah. It is. I think it's my historical love of My Little Pony, where I'm coming like Dreamfire and Moon Dancer and stuff <laughs> like that. It's because they're like proper My Little Pony names, aren't they? But they're really, really cool. So we've seen her, but we don't know a lot about her. We know that she's bonded to Bela Targaryen, and we've seen her potential in attack when we know that when she was uh, on patrol with Bela and she, they basically went for Kristen Cole and his cronies um, and they obviously took refuge in the uh, in the forest, but we've seen her size, we've seen her potential. So I think Baylor is gonna be fundamental in these battles as well. Uh, Moondancer being a good size and well-versed for battles, so it'll be really interesting to see where they go. Then we've got Cyrax, who is a female and is bonded to Rhaenyra Targaryen or Queen Rhaenyra, as we know. And she has an interesting story. They bonded when Rhaenyra was seven but she's always been a pampered princess. She's never had to go to battle. She's never had to leave, um, you know, where, wherever she was housed. She was housed at King's Landing and then obviously Dragonstone. Um, but she's one of my favorites because I kind of really like this personality. It's very entitled princess. Um, even yeah, though yeah. Rhaenyra has a good personality, she, she was also a pampered princess. So that shows their reflection in personalities as well. She's always had servants feeding her. So she apparently she refuses to go and hunt now because she's always been fed. Um, so huh. I also saw her, saw her <laughs> I know, saw her referred to as a pampered house cat show pony, which um, is an, so there we go, so back to My Little Pony, you see there's got to be influences everywhere here. Um, and she was also the mother of Arax, which is indicated by the name. Um, I think they, they continue those those sort of names, you know, Cyrax, Arax, uh, which also indicates she's the mother of Vermax, who is the older brother of Arax. Um, so there's a lineage there. And when we saw her take Renera to the beach to her, the, we'll find the remains of Arax and Luke. Um, she also cried out in the same way that Renera was because that's her son. So they were both finding their sons, sons dead on yeah, the beach. Yeah. So that was that was a very sad, very sad moment, but very poignant as well. I think it was made obvious that that she was the mother, but that was that's come from further research, really. Uh, but the, the names kind of give it away, I think. Um, she also laid a clutch of eggs in season one, so that also implies that those eggs could have become Arax and Burmax, um, which which makes perfect sense timing wise as well. Uh, so we'll see how she gets on in battle. Hopefully something kicks in with her because Renera has a hunger um, to, you know, end this battle and to, you know, she, she's she's very bonded with her dragon and hopefully they'll, they'll, she'll pick up on that and and get the best of whoever she ends up coming up against. But I'm hoping for the best for all these dragons, but it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not looking good. It's not, is it really? <laughs> so, onto your favourite dragon, Caraxes. Um, what guy. a personality. Yes, he is a male, um, obviously. I think that's quite obvious with him, and is bonded to Damon. Now, he has a great story around him. He's really the only dragon that has been spoken about because each dragon will have been given a personality and a description, but there, there isn't much available about the others. But with Caraxes, he's been referred to as a bullying white boy who thinks he can rap and overcompensate. So like real Kendall Roy energy. So anybody <laughs> who's watched the session will understand that reference. But to me, calling him a failed white boy rapper is just like pretty fly for a white guy. Ooh, you know, just like, imagine Caraxes. <laughs> you can imagine Caraxes with his little cap on, doing that outside, you know, in his in his red convertible, which is funny actually, because when I watched the video again after I after I saw that reference, he is actually driving a red convertible, so it's basically like Amazing. Caraxes. Amazing. He's also described as the fiercest young dragon in the Dragon Pit, and he was formerly bonded with Damon's uncle before he came over to Damon. 
So it's interesting, and it's re it was really interesting hearing what what the um, the sound designer Paula Fairfield how, how she described him, which is, well, that was basically her description, and that he also has a deviated septum, which you can see to, to the side of his head. I think it's the left side of his head, which causes his roar and vocals to be off and very unique. There was something mm -hmm. else I saw that was described by one of the showrunners as he has a bit of a crush on Cyrax and tries to serenade her, which is the the failed rap sort of theory, and it just doesn't work. Apparently. Currently. Um, but you know, maybe it does. Maybe it does eventually. The eggs had to come from somewhere, right? So he's a little dude. Um, he also has a lot of experience in battle and he's earned himself the um, nickname of Bloodworm. So we also saw him fight alongside Damon and Sea Smoke and Lenor in the Wolf and Step. Everything about and this dragon is cool. I'm sorry, Bloodworm. Yes, boy. He is cool. And it's also spelled W Y R M. So it's the but worm, worm. This is gonna roll your face around when you say that. He is a dude. So he, his first rider was Aemon Targaryen, Rhaenerys's father. That's Rhaenerys who rode Maelie's. Mm. Um, and it's being made clear that he's bored at Harrenhal now. So he's getting restless. And is he is he experiencing hallucinations like Damon is? So like obviously they've not shown that, but if they're bonded and they mimic each other, is that going like on with that. him? I like that. You know, it's. I mean, it's an interesting one in the sense of we're not going to see it because they haven't shown it. But how could that affect the dragon? Could that make him more motivated for battle? Could it make him more distracted? Could it be a tactic at all? It might not be anything, but it's one for consideration. So next we have Silverwing, who is arguably my favorite. I have a few favorites, but I, I really like yeah. her female. Um, she's another one that, that's laid a lot of eggs. So she was another theory on on Danny's um, on being the mother of Danny's eggs. Although Dreamfire just seemed to be the, the most surefire bet on that one. Um, she's obviously recently been claimed by Ulf the White, and she was formerly ridden by Alisan Targaryen, who is Jaceres the First wife. Um, so they were obviously a married couple. They were also brother and sister. Blech. Um, but they were a strong married couple in the sense of that was mimicked by their dragons. Um, so she just reminded me in that scene of the dragon from Shrek and just how she <laughs> flirted with him straight away and just sort of nudged him with her nose. It's like, how does she see him? Does she see him as a pet? Was she just bored where she was? And he's like the first human she's seen in such a long time. And with him being... Um, rumored to be the half brother of Viserys and Daemon like his blood is strong so and she's like oh <laughs> I'm coming out here's a dude I'm gonna I'm gonna have fun with this one and just the way that she <laughs> nudged him the fact that she he stepped on her on her nest you would think oh my god he's, he's gonna die yeah. but could she also have thought that he'd emerged from one of her eggs like it's 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 amazing to think how what must be going through these creatures' minds? Like, what makes them bond? Yeah, um, so I find her, I find her really, really um, intriguing. Um, like, was she bored, and was this the first playmate she'd had for a long time? So yeah, I'm interested to see where where they go. I think she she's a really cool one. Uh, I want to see more dragon from Shrek um, moments what from her. Um, <laughs> not interested in these battles. I want to see more flirting. <laughs> She's a little flirt. I think she's adorable. That's actually brilliant. The dragon from Shrek. So good. She was. And then finally, we have Vermithor, who was one of the two dragons that we met properly in the last couple of episodes alongside Silverwing. So Vermithor is Silverwing's bonded mate. Um, as we've just mentioned with Silverwing, his rider was Jaceris the first. Um, so they were a married couple. They're dragons mimics their behavior and they're basically a married dragon couple um he's known as the bronze fury um and he's recently been claimed by hugh, hugh hammer the blacksmith which was a great scene because it seems that yeah, it's very Vim good just a grumpy old man very cool and he's just a grumpy old man isn't he it's like no i'm not interested in any of these idiots and then you've got this huge guy who has no fear standing in front of him screaming at him and yeah. when he brings his head down to him it's like i like you like, mm. let's be friends. I think we could do something special here. Um, that was a really, really cool moment. And I like how different those two moments were of them claiming their two different dragons with their two different personalities on the human and the dragon side. So they were really cool moments. Um, he's surprisingly never seen a battle. 
He's never been into battle because yeah. his um, first rider was um, Jocerus I, who was known as uh, the counselor due to the lack of conflict during his reign. So he was never needed to be ridden into battle, which is, it, I mean, it sounds like it would be wrong considering his size, but if there was no battles, what need was there for, for fighting, you know? Yeah. Um, but he is huge. Um, he's also known to be stubborn and strong-willed, as we've seen, and the Targaryens stopped trying to bond him as he refused to be claimed. So obviously they've only tried to bond him again because they need him. So he's, they just stopped. And then obviously you had the, the Valerians, um, dragon trainers, who were just keeping them in check, basically. Uh, but he's not been needed for anything. And now they seem to have awoken a fire in him that he's never had to use. So he is going to be a very, very um, integral part of these battles. And I'm just really interested to see what strategy they use with the dragons, um, considering their different sizes, their different potentials, their different experiences, and their riders as well, and the experience of their riders. Um, some are probably just going to be thrown in for the kill so they yep so yeah that is the that they um that, that's the majority that's all of the main dragons and the dragons that we're probably going to see come into battle so let's get some predictions which dragons do you think we're going to lose in this next episode none i don't think any of them are losing i think it's that's how season three opens I think, think season yep I think season two is gonna end on a cliffhanger of the battle begins mm, I hope not because the next 18 oh they're gonna ball tease different. you like crazy right? <laughs> they, they're gonna ball tease you like crazy and then they're gonna start season three and be like oh my god yes the battle that's fair that's fair how about, how about I was you? gonna call I was going to call Vega. Nah, stop it. <laughs> Vega ain't dying, mate. <laughs> think think nope. about it this way. Think about it this way. Who is going to claim the cannibal? Who is going to put the cannibal under his control? Who possibly could? Aegon. After what he's been through. Aegon? Yeah. Think. Half dead Aegon and preview, zombie dragon. Oh, oh I, I, I do like that. But if you remember the preview, it's Aemond that goes, that is in front of him when he comes oh, out of wherever he is. Oh, yep. Jesus. Okay. Okay. It's Aemond standing that. there with the torch. So that's what made me think. But then I did think, you know, at the end of the day, at this moment in time, the Blacks have the, the dragon advantage and they have several large dragons. It Vagar, would take several Vagar, large Vagar, dragons Vagar. to take Vagar down. I'm just putting it out there. I'm not saying that it's going to happen. Or I'm saying okay, it would be an interesting oh, twist. All... Okay, well then that goes nicely with my prediction. If you kill Vega, and you think, oh, they've won because they got more dragons, and now Vega's dead, and then Cannibal Boy arrives, and then you think, oh, that's my thinking. That's my okay. thinking. Because and that's what I'm thinking about the green stuff. I can't remember for the life of me what it's called now, but that is obviously, you know. It, it, it's a huge explosive it's like a magical explosive and then you've got this dragon that is surrounded in green flame that is going to be very difficult to defeat if you're if you're making those connections and they're valid connections and if Aemond claims him he can't claim him if he's already bonded to another dragon that's my theory I'm not saying it will happen I'm saying it would be an interesting twist hmm both options good both options are good so that's everything on dragons <laughs> yes. And now, and now we get ready for season two, episode eight. Season two. I don't want it to end. No. It's so good. I know. And I don't want the sky puppies to die. Oh, like, gonna die. <laughs> like... There's gonna, there's, there's gonna be some sky puppy death. I assure you. I know. I'm gonna go claim my yeah. dragon in my dragon rider outfit right now. Who do you guys think is gonna die? Who do you guys think? Is going to survive? Do you think we're getting a battle? Do you think someone's going to lose their dragon? Do you, who, who's riding the cannibal? Like, lots of stuff to discuss. Let us know all that down in the comment section below. Thank you, Lauren, for sharing the Sky Puppy knowledge. And uh, guys, <laughs> let, let's let's look forward to the last episode. Here we go. House of the Dragon, 
finale for season two this coming weekend oh my god it's exciting all right guys we're out for now subscribe and like the video as always bye for now guys thank you so much